So that the man that they claim they're for is going to have the delegation he wants. That's number one. The second thing they ought to be concerned about is electing Ralph Yarbrough and put every energy and dollar and time they can in it, not run people off from him. That's right. All they're doing is making everybody not want to vote for Yarbrough, almost including me. Well, you see, when I talked to uh, Yarbrough, when he called me, he said that Conley was deliberately trying to build up uh, in order to uh, deny a res him a resolution endorsing him at the state convention. A resolution endorsing him ain't going to change him one well, damn vote. The point is, if, if, if they have a general resolution endorsing everyone, that's what the convention is for. I don't know whether... Democrats. I don't know whether they're going to have one even endorsing me. All I know is I told them this. That I want every delegate to come to that national convention to be a Johnson man. Period. Well, but why couldn't we try to bump some heads together down there? And I'd be glad to work on the labor end of the thing, even though the UAW guys are not the problem. That, number one, that the convention pledges full and un uh, wholehearted support to you and to all the Democratic candidates who've been nominated in Texas. And that, that means the Yarborough people support the Connolly people and vice versa. Well, I, I would certainly be for that. I'm going to support everybody. I'm going to support. I, I'm going to support everybody. That's. Uh, that's what that, you're going to do. That's right? right, and I'm going to support them openly, and I'm going to help raise him money, and I'm going to throw down any corporation president I can and make them help him. But while I'm doing that, he's going to be off trying to start a fight. Well, I mean, I'm. I think that that doesn't make any sense. What? And you and Dave, you and Dave McDonald and uh, and uh, O.A. Knight. I better just say, now, what we want you to do is we want that one vote in the Senate. And incidentally, we've got to have it for the cloture, and I, he, he he doesn't know what he's going to do on it, and we just got to have it or we're liable to lose it. Hubert and I talked last night till midnight on that problem. And uh, uh, he's going down there this Sunday, and uh, it's a hard vote, but he can't turn back to labor, and he can't come back to the Negroes, and he can't join over the Dixocrats. That's right. That's right. But he hadn't. Uh, he uh, he's uh, he's. You think, you think in a situation like that, he wouldn't be trying to make more more problems for himself? He's done that all of his life. Though so he's he's constitutional that way. That's why he ran five times before he got elected. I do my best because he votes for me a hundred percent. He votes for me better than you'd vote for me. And you can't get mad at a man that does that. No, except that you can think he's, his tactic is wrong. But he votes for me. Then he goes right out and starts a fight with the first man that helps him. Make a damn who it is. It'll be Hubert. Hubert told me last night he's about the damnedest problem that he had ever had. And I had him at lunch today, he and his wife, with the Shah of Iran, and had him sitting at the head table. And I went up to him. And I said, now, I want you to know, Ralph, I'm with you money, marbles, and chalk. And anything, any time you want me to do, call Walter Jenkins, and I'll pick up the phone and call him. Now, you go down there and run for yourself day and night because we cannot take two Republican senators from Texas. Right. He caused the first one, you know. He got in that thing and caused that. Now he's going to cause another. But what he wants to do, he and Ms. Randolph, they want to get down there and fight with Connolly. Now, what in the hell do you want to fight the man has got 72% of the votes for? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you see, two years ago when Connolly was running, uh, the state council down there were solidly against him. Yep. And uh, I sat down with Moon and our fellows, and I said, this doesn't make sense. You're going to elect the Republican. You're going to turn this, the, the, the whole state administration over to the Republican Party, and that doesn't make sense. And so we fought to get the, the state convention to leave it up to each individual union. We then endorsed Conley yep. the UAW. That's right. Well, uh... Connolly is not as liberal and progressive as I want him to be, but Le Connolly is much more uh, a representative of the Texas sentiment than I am. And uh, he's a hell of a lot better than the Republican. And, and ten times better. And what we've got to do, my job, is to get Connolly to support Yarbrough. Now, uh, you know, the first thing after this election, Connolly called me up and said, "Well, I've got 72 percent of the vote." Uh, two days later, he called me up and said, what have you got Ralph Yarber down here looking at the Secretary of State uh, office uh, checking every one of my county chairmen for? And I said, I never heard of it. Well, they said he got three men in there, and they're checking every certification to, to uh, uh, see uh, who my people are and what votes they got. And said, looks like, by God, when I didn't run a man against him and I didn't support McClendon, and I, I let him eke out and just slip in, 
that uh, we wouldn't have anything to fight about now, and he's going to need me a lot more in November than I need him. And I said, well, I'll check into it. And I checked into it, and Yar was down to see if he could control the convention. And so he's picking that fight. Yeah. He can't control the convention. It's going to be it's going to be two to one, Conley. So then he's going to say, well, if you don't let us have our way, even though we just got a third of the votes, and although Don Yarber just got 28% of it, we'll walk out. We'll walk out. Now Conley don't give a damn. Of course he does. And, and Walter, that's what's happened to us in Texas all these years. Shivers was a CIO lawyer. He represented the oil field workers at at, at, at Port Arthur. He was sympathetic to labor. He went to the Senate representing labor. Conley went in there uh, uh, being very sympathetic to them. But when they get in, some of these extreme folks start fighting with them, and, and uh, it, they rule or ruin them. And so they drive them over, and they get so extreme. Now, Conley is uh, 20 degrees to the right what he was when he's elected. Yeah. Well, I'll go to work on this thing. I, I'll do my best. The and the uh, guys were involved. There'd be no problem. There. Well, your boy, I forgot his name, that uh, died down there. You remember what? Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, what's his name? Cuban. Yeah. Yeah, he was a very fine person. Well, he was at the convention that night. I was there speaking and at the dinner. And uh, Moon and all those boys are all right. If they'd listen to them, they'd be all right. Now, Dave McDonald's got some boys down there that uh, that let this woman lead them off. Now, she's a good woman, and she's for our program. Yeah, but the she... problem are the steel workers, the oil workers, and the CWA, Joe Burns people. And, and they're just so goddamn bitter, they can't be sensible. Well, they... If I only had 28%, I'd be awfully careful who I challenge. Now, the only thing that, that the one job that labor's got to do in Texas is not Johnson, because they're all for him anyway. As not the Negroes, they're all for him anyway. Not the Mexicans, they're all for him anyway. The one job they've got to get done is get the moderate conservative Democrats to vote for Yarborough. They've got all the others. They've got all the oil field workers, all the CWA, all the steel workers, all the UAW, including the president. But they haven't got the others that they need to win this race in November. And they ought to run them off. They ought to try to get them. I'd kiss their butt every minute, and that's what I'm going to do. I bet I've seen 50 conservatives from that state. And every one of them, I say, please let Yarber come back to help me. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, uh... Uh, what happens in Atlantic City is not a matter of his concern at all because I'm going to be nominated. Sure. What happens in Texas is a matter of great concern to me. And I'll carry him over in Texas if he if he just won't make himself so damned obnoxious. Right. And he's a good man, and he, he votes right, and he feels right, except you've got to get him to vote for cloture. Now, that's, you've got to let to Dave McDonald or... Uh, and CWA, some of them know that uh, this vote last night, it looks like they've got about 24. And Hubert thinks we've got 41. I'm at 65. Now we need 67. And uh, we may lose one of those. But we've got to get Frank Clements agreed that this fellow Walters with Kennedy would vote for, uh, for cloture. But now he won't vote for him. And Yarber's doubtful. So we lost Keith Offer and we lose Yarber. Yeah. Why? We may lose that bill, and we're within one or two votes of getting it. And I think if they just got to tell him that he just can't go back on the people elected him. Right. And somebody got to get Ms. Randolph to tell him, and the only one I know can do that is still work. All right, I'll go to work on that right away. They don't quote me on it, because I don't want him to think it, but I had that. I will go 100% for Yarborough, and I'll raise him $100,000 if I have to. I'll do anything in the world to get him reelected. And if I had any power with him, I'd get him to quit fighting these other folks. Now, I'll, I'll fight with Conley. I've already fought with him right. on, 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 the, on the Arbor's uh, 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 first campaign, but I'll fight with him again. And Conley is going to support the nominee, and he's going to support him. And I'll try to get him to say so by resolution. I imagine Conley thinks that uh, what he's trying to do is hold these Dixiecrats and these conservative fellows from going over the Republican. Yeah. He's trying to hold them in the Democratic Party. That's right. And when we don't hold them, we always lose. We we didn't hold them in Dallas, so we got Alger. We didn't hold them in El Paso, so we got the boy out there. We got defeated. And we didn't hold them in the, the Senate race, so we got John Tower. Right. Uh, unless we can hold some of those conservatives, if they go Republican with us, well, then they beat us. Right. Okay, Walter. Well, let me, one thing, one yep. second. 
Uh, I'm coming to that Earhart dinner that you invited yep. me to. Yep. And my, my wife has a problem that night, and I was just wondering whether I violate protocol if I bring my oldest daughter. Hell no. I'd rather I'd rather have her than you or your wife. <laughs> I've got two daughters, and I'm a daughter man. I shall bring her You just along. bring her and tell her that she got a special oral invitation from the Very president. Good. Her name is Linda. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, I got a Linda, too. How old is she? She's a, she's a senior at the University of Michigan. Well, she must be 21 or two. I've got 21. one. I've got one that's going on to be 21 in the next March. She's 21. Well, I'll, I'll see her. Very good. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Say, what are you going to? What? When are you getting started on your negotiation? Uh, we don't start until uh, the 20, the 30th of uh, June. Well, I made a couple of passes at them, urging them to reduce prices, but I haven't had much success. I did, too. You saw the story in the New York Times today, if you get to it. I'm, I'm going to urge them strongly to cut prices. Mm -hmm. I'm in your corner on that one. All right. All the way. Bye. Bye.